In 1919, two British men set out to make history. They embarked on a journey unimaginable a decade before. They were chasing a 10,000 pound prize to be the first people to fly non-stop across the Atlantic. 2,000 miles of freezing, cold, treacherous ocean. Yeah, and we're going to fly it, not fall in it. Alcock and Brown were the least likely contenders to win. They arrived building an aircraft without knowing how they're going to take off. To take off an overloaded aircraft and an adequate field and then push off 2,000 miles into the unknown. You know, just as bear thinking about. Their chance of success was minimal. Their chance of dying significantly greater. You have to trust the instruments. The problem is that they didn't have instruments they could trust in 1919. No wireless, no radar, no tried and tested navigation. It would be a good facsimile of flying in, a, you know, in hell, frankly. Ninety years later, one man wants to revive the spirit of these two forgotten British heroes and follow in their footsteps in a small plane never designed to make the flight. Without doubt, you know, the risks they were taking were extreme, but it's, it's the same as if you're the first person to climb Everest. You're going to do things no one's done before. You don't know what the boundaries are of risk and, and uh, insanity. Sir Brown? Yes? Delivering. <laughs> it needs signing for. Was there something else? Sir Arthur Whitton Brown. I don't get it. I don't get what you're doing here. You're a hero. I'm busy. Sir, I'm sorry, sir. Look, I appreciate your interest, but... So I went to the library to look you up. There's dozens of books and newspaper clippings all about you, all saying you're a hero. Look, it says it here. It is an awful thing to be told that one has made history or done something historic. Such an accusation implies the duty of living up to other people's expectations. And merely an ordinary person who has been lucky, like myself, cannot fulfill such expectations. This is a story that begins with Britain's first press baron. Alfred Harmsworth, the first Lord Northcliffe, was the founder and publisher of the Daily Mail. He was a man who could see a vision of the future and a man who was ready to put his money where his mouth was. Just 10 years after the Wright brothers flew the length of a field, the owner of the Daily Mail was offering a huge cash prize to the first pilot to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. Quick translation, I think, of the prize money then, £10,000, probably worth 780000 now, somewhere around about there. The Daily Mail and Northcliffe would ridicule this. It's quite ridiculous asking, you know, giving a prize of £10,000 for people to do that. Uh, Cadbury, uh, Mr. Cadbury, I think, has offered £100 million for somebody that could fly five miles. He, they just didn't have that vision at all. Northcliffe definitely had an agenda. He was uh, not pro-war, but he was very nationalistic. He uh, believed in Britain and Britain succeeding. 
Um, he took it upon himself in the absence of government leadership to try and mobilise public opinion, to try and inspire and encourage people to take that extra step. When the First World War broke out just a year later, the prize was suspended and the point made by Northcliffe was proved. If the British government failed to pour money into the embryonic aviation industry, Britain faced defeat from the air in any future war.